So now continuing on with the properties associated with flex containers, we're going to be looking at justify content here. And this is a property that applies only to the main axis. Remember in the previous video, we talked about how we establish a main axis and a cross axis. So whatever we set our flex direction to will be our main axis. If we set it to row, our main axis will be going horizontally and our cross axis will be going vertically in the column direction. And likewise, if we set our flex direction to column, the main axis will be the column and the cross axis will now be the row or the horizontal direction. So now that we understand that justify content works with the main axis, whatever it's defined as, let's look at exactly what it does. Well, the whole idea of justify content is to distribute the container's items along the main axis. And Flexbox gives us six different ways to do this. And those are flex start, flex end, center, space around, space between, and space evenly. So let's take a look at each of them and see what they do. So the first thing I want to do is actually clean up the code that we had previously a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this media query here. Let's scroll up a little bit in the CSS file. And now let's take a look at the first justify content value that we have, and that is flex start. So as you can see so far, we have our parent container div, and that has this display of flex here. And even though we don't need to, we've explicitly set the flex direction to row. Remember, the flex direction by default is row, so we can choose to leave that out but we'll leave it here right now just so it's very explicit. Now let's go ahead and let's add in a justify content property and let's give it flex start. And let's save and take a look at the browser here. And we can see that there is actually no difference and that is because justify contents default is flex start. And what that one does is it packs all of the child items to start flush with the start of the main axis. So the main axis is start point is here at this left edge, and the main axis's end would be here at this right edge. So we're at the flex start, and you can see it's packed all these child items flush with each other. So you can imagine what flex end would do. That's our next property. So let's change justify content to flex end, and let's save. And now you can see it's taken those child items and it's packed them flush now with the end of the parent container. And since this is our main axis here, we can refer to this as the main end. Now let's try justify content center. So let's save and check out what's happened now. All the child items are still packed flush together. However, what Flexbox has done is to take the remaining available space in the main axis and to divide it equally amongst the left and the right side of those boxes or those child items. And let's not forget that we have control over what's defined as the main axis. So let's say that we kept justify content as center, but we wanted to change the main axis or the flex direction to column. Let's try that out. So instead of row, let's say column. And in order to see these justified to the center in the column, we'll have to increase our height. So let's say 500 pixels and let's save. Let's expand the browser a little bit here. And now you can see we've set our flex direction to column which is now the main axis. And since we've justified content to the center, those child item boxes are now packed flush together, centered in this main axis, which is the column. Let's move on now and look at the three other possible values for justify content. And we'll start with space between. So let's set flex direction back to row to start with. Let's save and then let's narrow up this browser window a little bit. And let's give justify content a value of space between and let's see what it does. Let's save and take a look in the browser. And what you can see that's happened is that Flexbox has taken the first child item in that main axis and set it flush against the main start, the edge of the main start, which is here. It's taken the last child item in that main axis and set it flush to the main end of that main axis, which is here. And then it's taken the remaining available space along the main axis and it's distributed it evenly between the child items. And you can see that space here in between one and two and in between two and three, that these are an even amount of space. Now let's take a look at space around and let's see what the difference is. So we'll give justify content a value of space around and let's save. And now take a look at what's happened. The first most obvious thing you can see is that there's now space around the first and the last item in the flex container. That is, they're no longer flush with the edges of the main axis. But how exactly was this space distributed? Well, there's two different ways that we can look at it. 
the first way we can look at it is to say that the space in between the items, so for example, in between one and two here, and in between two and three, are even. They're an equal amount of space. And then the spaces from the left edge of the container to the first item, as well as the space from the end of the last item in the container to the end of that container, are half the width of the space in between the items. So just roughly, if we look here, we can say that the space in between one and two and in between two and three are about 170 pixels. And then the space from the last item to the edge of the container are about 85 pixels. And the same for this space here. The other way we can look at it is to say that each of these items has an equal amount of space around it as the other items. So in other words, this last item here it would have about 85 pixels on the left side and the right side. This second item would have about 85 pixels on the left side and the right side. I'm just doing this approximately. And the first item as well would have about 85 pixels on both the left and the right side. So maybe we can think of space around as meaning that the space around each item is equal. Oh, snap. And then the final value we have available for justify content is called space evenly. So let's take a look at it. We're giving justify content a value of space evenly here. Let's save. And now let's check out the browser here. And as its name suggests, space evenly, we have an even amount of space around every single one of the items. So we no longer have that half size space with the first and last child items, but now rather we have an even amount of space here from the edge of the container to the last child item, as we do between all of the items along the main axis. Even though there's a lot more that we can do with Flexbox, there's many more properties which we're going to talk about. Even so, with just what we've learned so far, by setting a flex container, defining a flex direction as either a row or a column, and using justify content to distribute the items in the container in a certain kind of way, you might find that just using those properties is enough to get the job done. If we look back to that example of the website that we looked at a few videos ago, we can now see, for example, how in that nav bar, we can set a flex direction of row, and we can distribute all those nav elements within that row by using justify content. And the same goes for that container row that we looked at in the middle of the page.